Hey, good morning. Morning, everyone. Let me see if I can take this Bluetooth off. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Uh, you see in the title, pricing, this is one of the questions I get from, you know, every entrepreneur who, you know, comes to work with me. They want to know, like, what should I charge for my products and services? And so we're going to be talking about that on today. I find that um, so many entrepreneurs are being persuaded to raise their prices. And I think it's important, you know, <laughs> I think that many of us undercharge for our business model. We undercharge for profitability. profitability. Uh, we undercharge for, you know, just keeping, really maintaining the business. And when we look at the profit and loss, um, we usually are really, really surprised. But I want to talk about um, pricing on today and help you guys you know, who are thinking like, you know, am I even charging enough for my services? Am I in the right pricing standpoint for my services? So as you come on, say hello in the comments. Let me know uh, the type of service-based business that you own. Are you an owner or are you, um, <clears throat> do you work for a, a business or, you know, let me know what you do and how you rock out and how you serve in the marketplace. Hey V girl, how are you dear? Thank you for joining on this morning. I'm gonna do a quick introduction uh, before we get started here. And um, hey Keisha dear, oh great topic, awesome, awesome, wonderful. Um, I was trying to, you know, the question had been coming to me so often I said, well, let me talk about it. You know, let me, you know, with my private clients, I said, this is probably something that, you know, other people are, are wondering or, or concerned about as well. So I'm glad it's a topic of interest for you, Keisha. Um, for those of you who are joining throughout the broadcast, I want to have a conversation with you. So talk to me, you know, let me know how it's registering with you. If you find the information valuable, share, share with someone else in your industry or um, another business owner who you know worries about their pricing. Um, Keisha says, I have my own hair product line and, and I'm a stylist. Okay, awesome. Hey, Angela, dear. Um, you're a cosmetologist and makeup artist. Oh, that's good. You know, I believe that we're so, most of us are just creatives. You know, we really have been blessed with several different gifts and sometimes figuring out how to package them and monetize them in a way that doesn't have us running around like a chicken with our hair cut off and in a way that's also fulfilling to us. So one of the things I'm big about in business building is building a business that you love. I mean, that's just me. You know, some people go into business for, you know, other reasons, but I want a full circle experience. If I'm spending the majority of my time, you know, with anything, I, I want it to be fulfilling to me as well. I don't want it to be, you know, just this money-making uh, thing. Keisha, I love to cook. I believe if I wasn't a business coach, if I hadn't started in the industry, I would have been like a private chef for, you know, somebody, right? I love to cook. I love to actually host uh, people in my home. It's This is so divine. So I'm going to share something with you guys as we move forward in the broadcast that remind me that I said host people in my home so if I forget you know somebody just put that in the comments and I can pick it up as as I'm sharing with you so for those of you you know this may be your first time joining with with me maybe one of my um, regulars has shared the broadcast out and you're like who's this lady and what is she talking about I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry I am a transformational and I want you guys to pay specific attention to the word transformation on today because it's going to relate back to what we're talking about in our pricing uh, broadcast I'm a transformational growth strategist business consultant and certified life coach to uh, women service-based business owners uh, coaches and salon professionals and what I do uh, well how I rock out how my brand shows up in the marketplace is from a full circle perspective and so I focus on mindset personal growth and business building 
mainly guys the, the reason why I and, and I'm so fully in that space right now and it feels like really really good it because it's authentically you know who I am and at one point you know when I was bringing my consulting services online I was a little uncomfortable talking about mindset that I had been studying for years like if I remember <clears throat> even as you know a young girl uh, in high school, the books I read were on, you know, self-help books and, you know, personal growth and personal development, things of that nature. And so I, I just stepped fully into that space and I feel better than I've ever felt about the services that I offer to my clients. Um, secondly, as I opened my first business, um, early in, you know, those years of, of ownership, you know, my, my personal life sucked guys I was in a dysfunctional marriage uh, I just had a baby while well, I opened my business then I got married and then I had a baby all in a three-year time frame and systems and strategies have always been my thing I didn't always know that they were my thing <clears throat> but you know as you begin to understand more about who you are and this ties into branding as you begin to understand more about who you are and you know some of your areas of gifting you'll notice this thing from early in your life that you just kind of naturally did. You may not have known the value of it, so you understanding it is probably becoming more clear in your entrepreneurial journey. I just believe that our entrepreneurial journey teaches us how to do life, right? It shows every aspect of who we are. So as I'm learning myself, um, you know, I, I realized that I, I had systems and strategies. But regardless of how many I had, my personal life was rolling over into my business. Um, I was overwhelmed in the time that I was spending in my business and also not being able to fully um, show up, right, in the areas and the things that I value. And because I knew that you know, our personal life does roll over into our business and it's been something I've been studying for years. I started, you know, sharing some of the mindset principles and personal growth strategies with my clients who came to me for business strategies. <clears throat> and I noticed a significant difference in how they implemented, how they profited, and how they just gained momentum in their business when we talked about mindset first. And so I just gave myself permission to uh, give a full circle experience to my clients. So for those of you, uh, you know, maybe you're considering uh, having services with me, we get your whole life, we get your whole life. Because I believe that, you know, our personal life and our business, they kind of intertwine. And who, I don't know anybody who wants to run a business that runs their lifestyle as opposed to funding their lifestyle. And so, um, just operating fully in that space to help women service-based business owners, uh, coaches, and salon professionals really create businesses that they love, that they're fulfilled by, and that allow them time freedom while they're on their journey to financial freedom. Um, as, as a business aspect, I focus on branding, and I love branding. When I really understood what branding really was, I, was, I said that's my, my, my area of, of gifting. Right? It was just something I was already doing anyway. It was something that I absolutely loved. And that was learning more about people. Even as, so I started out uh, in my entrepreneurial journey as a stylist. I've been a licensed cosmetologist for 26 years now. And I owned a service-based uh, salon, a full-service salon and day spa for two, 10 years. I keep saying 12 because that was like, the number of staff that I had, you know, if we operated at our full capacity. And so sometimes you may hear me say 10 or 12 years, but it was 10 years um, in, in that ownership. And, and then I began getting people in the community asking me organically to help them with their business. So I've been doing it for quite some time without being compensated for it, but it was fulfilling to me. It felt great. Um, and even as a stylist, I love the people, right? I really, really loved uh, the people that I worked with. And so I just um, combined that into my brand. And so my consulting business is called Renew Full Circle, which aligns with everything 
um, that I shared with you guys. And so I really help people uh, get clear on who they are as a brand, uh, figure out who their ideal customers are, get more customers, uh, create amazing staffs, uh, create time freedom. So I, I share time rich models of building your business and um, help you stay on a growth path as far as your finances. So that's pretty much what I do in the marketplace. And um, I absolutely love it. I'm probably at the best space I've ever been in my life. And um, not because of the amount of money I make. Um, I actually transition from, you know, actually servicing clients and closing my salon business. Um, and I have, you know, made the income that I'm making now in that respect. But uh, the time freedom that I have is is it's completely different and so it's my mission to help other service-based business owners create more time freedom in their life as they're getting the coins okay so pricing so often I get clients who come to me who have you know it's been suggested to them that they raise their prices they're not charging enough and I do agree that especially women because we're nurturers and oftentimes we're uh, our feelings and our emotions are, you know, in in our pricing, if, if I could just be honest. Like if we specifically know a person's, um, you want time freedom, awesome, awesome. And I think, I think having a desire for that and being okay with desiring that is something we have to give ourselves permission to do. Because so long we've been taught, you know, that we got to work so hard and so many long hours in order to make it happen and it's just not true but um so i was sharing that so many clients come to me and you know they've been given advice to raise their prices and i do feel most of us are not charging our value and, and our worth but there are other things that should be considered before you raise your prices. So many of them come to me and say, well, I, I did raise my prices and, and I lost clientele. You know, I, I mean, like I'm literally hardly doing any customers because of my price increases. And so I want to share this concept of building a value based business with you guys. Somebody put value based business in the comments, value based business so when you are focused on building a value-based business as opposed to volume the way you build your brand the way you build the culture of your business um, the way you show up all of your processes and procedures are completely different uh, from if you were just looking for volume you guys get that I'm gonna give you guys some clear-cut examples so <clears throat> Some, and this is, I'm not saying that there is a right or a wrong, right? There's not a right or wrong. It, it completely and fully depends on what you want to build in the marketplace. And this is why I say many people are building businesses that they're frustrated by. They're not fulfilled by them because they haven't decided what, who they are as a brand and who they want to attract. And that then dictates your business model, like how you do your operations and things in your business. So here's a, a clear-cut example. Chick-fil-A and McDonald's. Chick-fil-A and McDonald's, right? That's an example. Value versus volume. So when I look at a brand like McDonald's, I see a brand that is more their biggest thing is volume let me get as many people in let me service as many people as quickly as I can and then look at those numbers in order to meet my income goals nothing wrong with that guys because we have different um, structures pricing structures right not everybody has to be high end not everybody has to be low end but you do have to figure out what your business model is so that you know how to market and so that you know how to put your systems in place. Keisha says, this is perfect. I just posted how I love being a hairstylist. Okay, so the next thing is we talked about um, McDonald's versus Chick-fil-A, right? 
This can also, say for instance, we're talking about, um, okay, I told you guys I would take the word transformation. Remember, I kind of expounded on it or expressed it differently, you know, when I told you guys what I do. So that's the difference in transformation and transaction. Transformation and transaction. You guys get that? Transformation and transaction. So transformation is when you go the extra mile for the consumer. Do you? It, we use the Chick-fil-A and McDonald's um, example. And what happens is you build a value-based business. So people, when people come to you, they're looking for value. They're not necessarily looking at your prices. You guys know, you go to Chick-fil-A and build um, and, and buy from them, even though they cost more, because of the value of what it is that they bring. So they actually offer transformation as opposed to just transaction. You guys get that? They actually offer transformation as opposed to transaction. So when we're looking at our pricing and things of that nature, I believe we should charge our worth. But what I also feel is missing, and this is what I help my clients to do, I help them look at their processes to figure out how they can create a different experience for their clients that would be valued even more by the consumer, right? And so I, when you think about this, I don't want you to think that giving value means you have to do more stuff. Giving value does not mean that you have to do more stuff. It can be the difference in you servicing a client and, and doing the service on them and then you having more of a consultation about what you're doing, why you're doing it with them, why you use this particular product, why you do it this particular way. You're adding value to the consumer. If you are in business, maybe you have a resource uh, for a client that you know would be valuable to them that you've either partnered with another business or you actually have that added item that the client actually needs. So here's an example. Say for instance, if you're a realtor, so you can either, as a realtor, it's, the difference is in selling a house and selling a home. Selling a house and selling a home. So if I was working with a realtor on you know really creating more profits in their business making their business one that they're fulfilled by and one that their clients just absolutely love i would have them to get and periscope we're going to go out because um my battery is extremely low um on periscope but i'm on facebook facebook.com slash build with tanya if you want to join us so i would work with them on really getting clear on their customers. So you guys know if you're selling a house, there are different prices for the, for homes. There are different um, neighborhoods that the homes can be in. There are different sizes. And so the realtor's job would be to figure out why would a person of this demographic be buying this particular home? So once they figure all of those things out, then they can provide uh, things that add value to the customer in the process of sell selling. For instance, so someone purchasing maybe a $150,000 home who was concerned about the school district, we know that person has children, right? So when you're having conversation or marketing or whatever it is that you're doing, and not just talking, but also whatever your services are, you're able to provide things of value because you understand who the customer is. Somebody tap the screen for hearts if that's clear to you. This is the difference in a value-based business um, uh, and a, a business that's just looking for volume. This is the difference in transformation because transformation is something that the client affects the client long-term. It affects them long term in multiple ways. A transaction is something that they, they just buy the product and move on. Do you guys get the difference, right? That the, those are two completely different types of businesses. And so when you're thinking as it relates to pricing, 
So there are a couple of things. Of course, you need to know what your expenses are. You know, many of you aren't even charging enough to really profit. So there's some numbers and some categories that you need to look through. Maybe you're, you know, can you pay your overhead and your personal life? And so there are a lot of numbers that you need to look at, but also deciding what type of business you're going to have. So many of my clients come to me because of the transformation that they receive. So one of the things I understand about what I do as a consultant and coach is the services that I offer are long term. So they affect a person's business and life for a long time. It's not just a one time transaction, boom, boom, bam, right? I, I understand that. And because I understand the value that I bring in the marketplace, I can price my services accordingly, right? Because I get results. My, this is what, these are the things that my clients share, share with me. Now, the difference and why most people don't build value-based businesses, they build businesses just based on transaction. One, because when we start out in business, most of the time, we need something we can play with now, right? Uh, we need butts and seats. We need clients in the business. We need someone purchasing the product. We need cash. We need coin, right? But if you continue to stay on that path, you, you won't build a sustainable business. You won't build. It will always be a hustle. But when you build a value-based business, this is why many people stray away from that and they stay in the transactional mode of building their business and sometimes it's simply because we're unaware it's not even because we realize that that is what we're doing but when you build a value-based business it requires more from you building a value-based business requires more from you it requires you to grow in areas that you just didn't feel were necessary to grow in in order to to operate your business do you guys get that right so those are the differences and when I say charge your worth I have my clients to really look at what is it that you're giving the consumer what is the client getting right and then we create growth paths to be able to up level whatever it is that they're doing and remember I said a lot of people think that giving value means giving more stuff but that's like taking a course or a class and they got 5,000 pieces of information in it, but it's so much and it's just so surface and it's overwhelming and you take it and then you don't feel like you really got value from the course. You guys tap the screen, does that make sense? Oftentimes value-based businesses are very simplified in the number of things that they do, but the quality and the level that they do it on is much greater. You guys get that? It's much greater. And so when you're thinking about your pricing, this is why branding is so important to me. This is why I stand by it. Um, I stand by the methods that I take my clients to in order to gain clarity on who they are as a brand because it dictates everything else. It dictates everything else. And so when you're thinking about your pricing, it's two things. Of course, you have to look to see if what you're charging is actually profitable if you're producing a profit. And there are um, steps. I take my clients through those as well because we have to know the numbers. But deciding on who you want to be as a brand. And building a value-based business does require you to grow often. It is the role that less people travel because they rather just do the service, get the client, and move on and not look at some of the other concepts or detailed things that they can actually do that will actually make their impactful work a lot less. It won't be as nearly as much of a chase when we move past the surface level. So that's my take on today. Something for you guys to think about with your pricing and how you want to operate your business. Remember I said there's, I mean, we know businesses all day long that are based on volume and transaction and they're doing major things but it just depends on what type of business that you want to offer so many of my clients because it's transformative they also want to have transformative services for their clients so i attract people you know who also want to provide transformation for their guests guys that's my take on today on pricing another thing when people are telling you to raise your prices it's not just a matter of well i'm just getting ready to go up on my prices there are some things that you need to look at right and so if i want to do a price increase in my business 
I also know that I probably need to up level a system or an experience or something that my clients receive when I work with them, right? So all of those things make a difference too. So we can't, you know, go from charging $25 to $200 and we didn't change anything in the process because someone may come one time, which is really just a customer, right? But not become a client. On Wednesday, I'm gonna be talking about the difference in a customer and a client and the strategy and the process that you do and um, you know, just having the mindset that you're not just after customers, but you're wanting to um, build clients. And then for those of you who are business owners, understanding that your staff is also your client. Your staff is also your client. You guys have a super, super amazing day. day. For those of you who would like to connect with me outside of social media, you can always go to renewfullcircle.com, renewfullcircle.com. So it's some information, some free trainings and opportunities to hop on complimentary calls with me or if you know that hey i'm ready to invest uh that opportunity is up there as well you guys have a super super amazing day let's build some value-based businesses